Hi there, my name is Aaron Short and welcome to my YouTube channel. And today I'm talking about the Tone Master Pro for acoustic guitar. So obviously a lot of people watch my channel for the acoustic guitar content. I mostly play acoustic guitar when I do shows. I do a lot of solo guitar shows where I sing and play acoustic guitar. I'm sure there's people out there like me that whenever these guitar modelers are released, we're looking at them thinking, can we use them for our solo acoustic shows? Today I'm gonna to show you the acoustic effects for the Tone Master Pro with a basic piezo under saddle pickup to give you an idea of what's possible and also share my thoughts and opinions on why the Tone Master Pro may be good for your acoustic guitar gigs and also some constructive criticism to Fender about how to improve the unit. Before I even get started, the most important thing to me with these things is form factor. So straight away, I'll tell you the Line 6 Helix will do everything this does and more, but the Line 6 Helix is a big unit and their smaller units sacrifice some of the features like the mic input. So for that reason, I've been using a Neural DSP Quad Cortex, but that doesn't have the screens that the Tone Master Pro has and the slightly more spaced out foot switches. So they're also silent foot switches pretty much, which I like for acoustic as well. So Fender are already on a good path here with the form factor. They've chosen the great form factor. Everything about it, can be changed with firmware. Nothing is labeled as treble middle bass. Everything is just a touch screen and a screen. So Fender have a blank canvas here that they can improve with firmware. By the way, if you hear a hissing sound, it's because the noise gate is canceling out my radiator. It's that time of year. Must talk about humidity soon for acoustic guitars. If you wanna see that video, subscribe and ring the bell. But let's jump into the Tone Master Pro. So the form factor is great. It has those two inputs, one of which is a mic input, it's actually a combination input. So you've got two quarter inch inputs or the quarter inch and the mic input. So what you could also do with this unit if you play acoustic guitar and don't sing is you could use the mic input for a real microphone and blend that sound with your piezo pickup. That could be phenomenal. And if you do sing, you've got that mic input for your voice. So let's go and look at the chain and see what it looks like. So here you have it. I've made a preset already with some of the things that I'd like to have in an acoustic guitar preset. I'll talk you through which each one does and I'll also show you an example using the loop pedal. I've recorded a Fishman Gold Plus under saddle pickup into my loop pedal and plugged it into the Tone Master Pro. I use Cole Clark Guitars Live and I also recommend the Bags Anthem because it has a microphone in it and they do sound more natural to me but I'm using the under saddle piezo today because I want to show the most kind of obvious, most commonly used pickup. Maybe maybe it's not. Hey, I hope it's not these days. I hope we're using dual source and, and three source pickups. But I decided to use the under saddle pickup to give you the most extreme differences using IRs and the acoustic amp model in the Tone Master Pro. But obviously the pickup you use with this will change your results. So do bear that in mind that this is just a basic overview of this one pickup system. This is the chain, the signal chain. And what I've added here, which is what I would normally have, is an IR. Now it's very easy to load IRs into this. There's no acoustic IRs in the unit, but if you create your own acoustic IR, you can just drag and drop it into the folder. I'll show you where that is. There's a speaker icon. Simply drag that IR into there, it adds it. And then when you go back to your chain, you can then add an IR block using the plus sign here, but you've got a low cut and a high cut filter on that IR. On something like the Helix, you do have a more advanced section here with like a mix control, a volume control. So there's definitely some more features they could add here, but I do like how easy it is to add an IR. Now I don't use acoustic IRs live right now. I don't think they're there yet, but I think they are the future. And I think it's great that we have that ability in this unit to add them. So let me bypass that again. At the end of the chain, I've got a compressor. Again, I don't tend to use much compression live, but because you can have it on here, I wanted to add it. So there's the compressor. Before that, I've got an EQ, which is like a boss kind of EQ. I would use this as a solo boost by just adjusting the gain here and possibly the EQ if needed as well. Before that, I have a EQ3 which has a mid frequency parametric EQ. There is no actual parametric EQ, which is a problem for me in the unit, but I'll talk about that in a second. A large plate reverb, which is what I like for my acoustic guitar and a digital delay. Again, I like that for my acoustic guitar. The star of the show and the one we'll start with is the Acoustasonic amp. One thing Fender does have in this pedal is a dedicated acoustic amp model that other modelers don't have. And sometimes I think it's unnecessary because an acoustic amp is basically just a flat range speaker. But I have noted in the past that Fender and Fishman 
do kind of sweeten their acoustic amps to work well with piezo pickups. For that reason, I'm glad they've included this model here for acoustic players. And it has these interesting controls at the end, string dynamics and sh dynamic frequency, which I'll try out in a second. So I'm going to play the loop from the pedal. I will disengage everything and let's see what that sounds like. So that's the Fishman Gold Plus in my Martin OM28 Custom. Not a bad sound, very strong, very clean, low noise, very balanced, but it does have that quacky electronic quality to it that many people don't like. And that's really the aim with something like this acoustic amp model is to get rid of that, dial some of that out, give it some more body. So let's see if we can do that with the amp. Let's start off by setting everything at around five and see what that sounds like when I engage it. So here we go. If you look at the bottom of the screen where it says bypass, you can see when I'm engaging and disengaging these effects. When I turn that on, it's very subtle at five. Let's go a bit further. Let's cut some mids. That might make it sound sweeter still. Boost a little bit of a bass and treble and try it again. So again, it's very subtle, but it's doing something. Let's try the string dynamics and dynamic frequency. Now with string dynamics at 10, I do hear that high fizzy metallic quacky sound going away. That's awesome. With these settings right now, I do think it's improved it quite a lot. Let's hear it without and then with. So start without and I'll turn it on. It's really subtle, but it is doing what it says it will do. It's sweetening the tone. It's giving us some basic EQ control over our tone. And that's a big thumbs up from me. I would love to see this model in the other units, actually. Now I'm actually a convert. I always said that we don't need acoustic amp models in the Helix and the Quad Cortex. I was wrong. We do need them. This is a very good move by Fender. It sounds really good. It's subtle, but that's what I'm looking for. A subtle improvement just to make it like just to sweeten the tone. Okay, I need to add reverb. I cannot hear an acoustic guitar without reverb. So let's try the plate reverb now. Not bad. I usually like a long decay and less mix. And there's some other settings here as well. That's nice. That is a nice, nice reverb. So I'll play it through once with that so you can hear it. Very good, very good. All right, in my patch, I like to have delay mostly for a solo. It's just a digital delay. So you could have this on the whole time. Let me just show you what it sounds like quickly. It's a delay. Okay, hard to go wrong with the delay. That could be nice too for ambience, but I usually use that for a lead break. All right, let's keep going here. Something that's really important to me is a parametric EQ. Now, this is more important to some acoustic guitar pickups than others. For example, the K and K and those kind of pickups, I need to get in there and really surgically remove certain frequencies. Also, the new Bags Hi-Fi, wonderful system, but I do have to cut around 170 hertz on that. So there is an EQ that's parametric, but only on the mid-band frequency. If you look here, we have bass, treble, and they don't tell you what the frequencies are. And then a mid, the mid does tell you the frequency, to be fair, but it only goes down to 200. 200 isn't really enough, because I often have problems with 120, 130, 150, 170 hertz, and I can't get there with that. There is no true fully parametric EQ in this unit, and that could be a real problem for certain acoustic guitar pickups. But having said that, let's see what we can do with it. It 
So I tend to do that, set the cue really high, turn the mids all the way up, scan through to find that frequency that bugs me. In this case, it's one, two, nine, one, and then cut the mids down a little bit. And I can hear that harshness coming back when I turn the pedal off, but whether you want to use this or not is entirely up to you. I definitely think Fender need to add a fully parametric EQ with multiple bands that can all be adjusted how you want them to be adjusted. For me, that's a must. All right, finally, I'll try the compressor. I have noted with the compressor, it doesn't show you on the screen how it's engaging. With the Helix and with the Quad Cortex, you actually get a graphic to show you how the pedal is engaging, which is really useful to visually see how much compression you've got going on. But let's try it anyway, just to see if we can smooth things out. It certainly does the job. Did you notice there, I hit the chord loud at one point, and then with the compressor on, it totally smoothed that out. So it's doing the job, I'm impressed. I didn't show the IR block. This IR that I've got in here isn't created for this guitar, and I'm not a huge fan of IRs these days. I'm gonna be doing more with them in the future, so stay tuned for that. But let's turn the amp off, and let's just turn the IR on to see what it sounds like in this pedal. So here's the dry acoustic sound. And here's the IR. Now you might prefer that, you might not. It's very subjective. I find these IRs for acoustic to be a little bit metallic sounding. It's nice to blend a little bit in. You can't do that on this block, but you could do it with a dual path. You can do that, but it'd be much easier to do it from the block if they just added a blend control. But yeah, not bad. And you can do the cuts as well. So you can bring the cut up here to get rid of some of that low noise. And you can also do the high cut if you wanna make it less, less bright. So let's hear that. It's definitely more mic-like, but it also adds its own problems, I feel. I actually like this straight-up acoustic amp. Because it just sweetens the sound without making it sound kind of weird. Let's just try the IR and the acoustic amp. For me, that's just too that's too distant and boomy now. Now I've lost all the definition. So a blend control on the R would be great. Again, you can do a blend using the split path and everything in this, but it'd be so nice if they added it to the block. So I would leave that off. I would use the acoustic amp 100%. I would use the plate reverb, I'd use the EQ3, and you could add two of those as well if you want to, but you can't get down to those bass frequencies. I would use the EQ7 as a solo boost for taking a solo, which may turn on at the same time as a delay, be nice. And I would use the compressor for a subtle compression to smoothen out the sound. So this gets a thumbs up for me for acoustic guitar. There's just a few things missing that I'd like to see added in a future firmware update. And one more thing that I didn't mention in the video is that I'm using this external TC Ditto looper for today's video. Well, there is an always on looper in this pedal in the Fender Tone Master Pro, which is great, but it's always at the end of the chain. So I'd love to see a setting in each preset to move that looper to the start of the chain, and then you can use it to audition sounds like I'm doing today. So I'm impressed with this from an acoustic standpoint. It's a very solid start, but there is a lot missing. Don't get me wrong. I've mentioned the things that I think need to be changed, which is mostly the looper at the start of the signal and the fully parametric EQ, and also the blending options on the IR. But it's a solid start. What would I need to use this for my solo gigs? Well, I would need an intelligent vocal harmonizer, a fully parametric EQ, a longer looper, two tracks of looping, and loop imports, at least. I'd also like to see a full strobe mode on the tuner and an always-on tuner display when you're in performance mode. But look, I might talk about that more in the future. I'd like to see those things added to all the modelers, but as a straight-up guitar processor, this is a very good starting place for many players. I, I, I'm more impressed than I thought I would be, actually, for acoustic guitar. It's very good, but let's sit back and see how frequent those updates come from Fender. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this take on the Tone Master Pro for acoustic players. If you're new here, please subscribe and ring the bell. Let me know what you think of this unit in the comments below. And if you've tried this with acoustic guitar, what do you think? Let me know and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and be well. Bye-bye.